Good morning, race fans! Or actually, it's afternoon now. Welcome to Pukekoe Raceway here in New Zealand. Alongside of me, we have DJ Curtis and Vince Freeze, and we are going to be get going racing here in New Zealand. How are you two doing today? It's pretty good, Kay. Looking for an exciting race. We have an interesting front row and an interesting development in the back of the field, too. We have some people with major grid penalties, and we also have a last week's winner, DJ Curtis who's within the booth with us tonight. He's starting a little deep down the order to see if he can make a comeback like he did as surfers and make it happen for two for two. Not sure if that's going to be the case here, Vince, but even so, it could be a fun race for even a lot of the other racers around. With such a complex grid, a diverse grid to say the least, with a lot of new faces, a lot of different teams making their way towards the front row, could be a fun one, especially with the notorious hair pin. I have a few issues with that. Um, to say the least, in uh, qualifying and saw that one, uh, a couple spots in terms of a penalty. But overall, could be a fun one, hazardous uh, corner, to say the least. Let's take a look at the driver with the largest penalty. Evan Bird, he incurred over 20 positions worth of penalties for this race. Uh, if you're Evan Byrne, you're in a quicker car, you're back with the Minardis, Force Indias, and Arrows of the world. What are you looking at going forward here? strategy i think is going to be the key for evan burton patience right you don't need to go balls to the wall on lap one a couple positions maybe four or five on lap one get him into that uh, that rhythm right get into the group for first four or five laps let the tell you know wear those tires out make sure you stay in there and trust the strategies because strategy is going to come into play with the lower down four settings i expect tire deck to be high I also expect attrition to be also a big factor here, so if Byrne really just keeps it nice and easy the first couple of laps and let the other drivers kind of take themselves out, he could easily get some good track position even before case of the strategy calls. Yeah, David Tolfe uh, also lost a couple of, also lost a position with his teammate Alex Tanker. Of course, Tolfe originally qualified 29th, however, he had the incident at Surfer's Paradise with race leader Zachary Fitzwater, and actually, uh, Tanker got up to the next row of the grid because of Burns penalty. And now we're going to look at the aforementioned DJ Curtis, the winner in um, Surfer's Paradise here. He is going to be starting 17th or 18th on the grid here. I believe he's 17th on the grid. What do you think is the strategy now for DJ Curtis? You've got one of the most powerful cars on the grid at one of the most power-hungry tracks on the schedule. How do you think DJ is going to have to get through the field? Well, DJ, he, he's got to think about this. I think he's in the same position as Burn, right? He's got a fast car. He's starting next to a Benetton. I'm looking for him to get a quick start, though, because that Ferrari launches off, go off the line. Expect for him to get a quick start. Maybe avoid some uh, attrition up front. You, we're going to see that hairpin, right? We could see some one-off spins or some guys just beat you in the corner going over, cooking the brakes. And uh, DJ's in prime position. He gets in a top 10, 15, even to start, plays the strategy and saves those tires, I expect him to be in a top five by at least halfway distance. All I right. think those two mistakes oh, also hurt in there, so my apologies there, but if he keeps it nice and easy early on, um, saves those tires, as you mentioned, Freeze, could be a good contender. All right, let's take a look at the full starting grid right here. Evan Byrne will be starting dead last on the grid here at Pukekoe, and alongside of him, we've got David Tolfe, two drivers that we've already talked about. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Alex Tanker and and Archie Willington will be the next two cars on the grid. Uh, Force India hasn't had a great start to the season, have they? No, they, they definitely need to look at their development program, I think, especially with the upgrades, I think. This is going to be a key race. If they don't start getting up the grid, I think the upgrades could be coming sooner and adjust. We'll see what happens, though. And the next car's on... The next round... Uh, the next uh, cars on the grid are the two minorities of Ivan Stark and now debutante Scott Roush on the grid. Um, going forward, uh, we saw Minardi get points in Surfer's Paradise, which is huge for that Constructors' Championship battle for funding later on in the year, at the end of the season. Because as you know, um, the lowest three teams on the schedule or on the team chart, uh, or the lowest two teams on the team chart don't get funding, as much funding as the teams that are higher up. So Minardi now is above Force India in points. So um, any comment about Minardi? Very surprising to see even them get points in Australia, and they basically just, again, attrition usually has been a big factor in the series, as of right now, with only running around in the books. But if, again, attrition kicks in, they could get some points again here. They're, not, they're no strangers to taking advantage of certain scenarios. Joachim Casperson, and alongside of him, you have Modest Berenger, 
in the other force, India. What about Casperson starting so far down the order? Sauber was the only team to score to get double points in um, Australia. Okay, that's the shock of the weekend, I think. Casperson, that's Sauber. We, after what happened last week with the double points of the scoring of the team, you would think, you know, Casperson would be in the top 15 at the earliest. I expected high hopes for him, but maybe Sauber's looking for that race pace, right? They're expecting a high attrition race, as DJ mentioned before. And the tires, right? I think the Sauber, one thing about Sauber last week, they held on to their tires pretty long. They did their thing. So I expect them to put, use the strategies to their advantage today here at Piacoe. Here's Modest Behringer here. Out qualifies his teammate, but doesn't do much more than that. The next cars on the grid are the two Toyotas, who are, again, a team that we're thinking is going to be fighting for the lowest points positions here with Arrows and Minardi for those last two spots on the grid. Um, they scored points in Surfer's Paradise as well, so Daniel Adventure and um, Julius Anderson are um, kind of ahead of the game where they thought they'd be for a brand new team. What do you got to say about the Toyota team for this weekend? Because we know that their car isn't exactly the fastest. I think it's really more or less just trying to survive the weekend. They're not really having any upgrades from what I recollect, so Toyota's just really just trying to get the cars in one piece, I would say. Not the quickest on the grid, but similar to Minardi, they could really just take advantage of people's mistakes in order to get at least, you know, the points. The next row are the two Jaguar team, another team that's kind of a backfielder trying to maybe strike their way into points. They almost got some points in Surfer's Paradise, but Frodemar Ots and, I believe, Pat Mikola will be uh, struggling a little bit to get up the order there. Next on the grid, we have Nathan Ormond. His teammate, Sean Ard, made the top 10. And alongside of him, you have DJ Curtis, who in a Ferrari, we've already kind of talked about DJ Curtis a bit, uh, needs to climb his way up the order. Um, we know Ormond got into a big wreck in Surfer's Paradise. Uh, how do you recover from that going forward? Well, Ormond, with the connections with the Benetton team, he definitely cost some dollars for the team, not going to lie. Uh, but you got to think about it. This is a psychological sport. You know, you get into those turns, right, and you're thinking, well, this is a fast track and braking is going to be key. I'm wondering, I'm going to see how Orman does on lap one of the hairpin. Does he overcook it? Does he stay close? We're going to see. Just nice, consistent laps, though, and definitely survive the attrition, and he'll be in a good spot for the top 15 run. Along in the next row, you have Jack Halleck and Kenny Myatt on the grid. Uh, of course, Kenny Myatt blew up and finished 29th in the um, – Surfer's Paradise Race, and Jack Halleck also was in the points for a little bit there, the Australian was. If you're Myatt and Halleck in this case, how do you try and perform better? Because we know the Jordan team is supposed to be one of the better teams on the grid. They haven't shown it so far during race pace at Surfer's Paradise. How do you get from this far down the grid, from the midfield, up into the points consistently battling then? Patience. Plenty of patience, and I think both of these drivers know they've got the speed and the pace, as well as the car, to get themselves into the point standings. Both of them were looking very good at Surfer's Paradise before issues that really plagued them both, to say the least here. So I think they both know that the results didn't really showcase how they should have ran. And one thing to add, Kenny, you got to think how his teammate Bouchard's going to be in the top 10 shoes. So you know that thing has pace in the Ferrari power car and the Haas. That could be definitely a, a play on the straights. Servino Rosselli and Darren Blake are the next two cars on the grid. Rosselli was a star in Surfer's Paradise, king of keeping his nose clean, got a second place out of it, as was Darren Blake for that matter. I believe he finished fourth. Both these drivers uh, midfield, but I think they can get up the grid. The next row is Grayson Ace Vito and Vince Freeze. These are the last two cars that missed out on Q3. But um, going forward, these drivers, I believe, can break into Q3 pretty easily. And now we're into the top 10 here, and there's some surprises in the lower top 10. Dornan Bouchard in the Haas, and Sean Art in the Benetton. If you're, what do you think the expectation for these two cars are going to be? I don't outrun the car. I think that the key is, like I said, you mentioned it, Kay. The guys behind are definitely faster. I think, like I said, top 10 run for the team, bring it home in one piece, as DJ mentioned earlier. And we talked about the story of patience and survive the attrition. I expect these guys to be in the top 12 all day, though. And look at some strategy. And some luck and maybe a safety car, which could be in the play. They could definitely sneak in the way you get some two points or four points at the minimum. 
Oh, most certainly. Sean Art has really been a surprise, I would say, in the paddock as the moment with a top 10 run like that and a Benetton. And you compare that to Ormond's qualifying run. This is huge for Sean Art's confidence here. And if he can get some points a day, that would be also tremendous for him. And keep in mind, Sean Art qualified 28th at Surfer's Paradise. So going forward, that's going to be a good thing for him. Zachary Fitzwater and Jesse Turner are the next two cars on the grid. Turner was another driver that we kind of were surprised out qualified qualifying this high up the grid um good to see turner this high up the grid and zachary fitzwater of course had the heartbreak of surfers paradise alongside of him there the next row now we've got the two mclarens of casey nanico the only female on the grid and jack marriott here these two cars were on the front row at surfers paradise uh just very different track we said before how will this play out going forward in this race uh do you think the mclarens are going to be as strong as they were at surfers paradise I expect the McLarens to be stronger, actually. I think the Surfers Paradise race, unfortunately, lost for Nanica. I remember he wrecked out at the end of the race there. But you got to think, McLaren definitely has the, the quick, short run pace. If they can keep that up and they can you know, max, maximize the tires and keep the degradation low, they can definitely play a mix in the podium contention. They got the pace. The next row on the grid, we have Samit Ozkin and Kitsune Hashimoto. Uh, this is kind of where the... Um, uh, Red Bulls and Mercedes split each other. We didn't expect the Red Bull Hondas to be this high up the grid, but they are. So um, the Hondas aren't the most powerful cars. Why do you think they qualified so well then? Chassis. I think it's definitely how they adjusted their car in terms of the low speed corners. Though it is mostly a bit of high stretch corners in terms of the track itself. I think really just that chassis really just kicked me in for the Red Bull. This just shows how quick they are in those low speed corners, or just corners overall. They definitely have the best corner speed. And, and Max, Mercedes oh, right there, too. Yeah. And Max Anderson and Lucas Alameo are the final two cars on the grid. So before we begin, what are your what are your race predictions for this race? We've got about a minute and 30 before uh, we have to go to commercial. I'm going to say right now, Cam, I think we're going to get one safety car. I know last week I said we would get a couple, and I think this week it's going to stick true. We'll get the 100% record safety cars. Uh, I'm going to go with the bold one. I'm going to say DJ Curtis not only gets in the top 10, I think he gets a top 5. And I say Evan Byrne from 20, from 12, excuse me, 30th on the grid. I say he sneaks into the points as a bold upset prediction. DJ Curtis, you got any I predictions? Actually, I actually think Curtis is actually going to struggle in this race. It's going to be hard to really keep your P's and Q's together and really just try to keep the car clean overall. Try to keep that front wing intact so you get some good downforce. But I think it's going to be someone in the front row. I think a Red Bull actually could take advantage and win this Grand Prix here today. In terms of drivers going from the back, Vern might be one to look out forward to in that Jordan. I'm going to say an even very bold prediction. I have a feeling this is going to be a higher attrition race than we thought. And I am going to make a really bold prediction and say uh, it wasn't a fluke that a Toyota got a point run. I would say either a Toyota or even an Arrows will get a point today. Um, so with that being said, we'll be back for the race. And we are lined up on the grid here. We're going to see what happens here. The lights are on, and away we go here at Puke at Koei Park. Great start by Salomeo. The Red Bulls did not go, and now we've actually got Hashimoto going for the lead here. Terrible start by Max Anderson there, and we've already got a uh, Jack Marriott already looking to maybe take over fourth there. Great start by the two Mercedes cars as they go onto the back stretch here. Down to that elusive hairpin. Very clean start toward the back there. I believe one of the uh, Force Indias, uh, Archie Willington, also must have gotten a bad start here. As they go down to the hairpin for the first time. Will we see chaos down here? By heavy on the brakes there. Whoa, one oh, of them. Oh, we got one. Oh, got, we got a Behringer's oh, around. Yeah, around and actually both the Force both Indias Force went around. Indias. I think that was a lot. Oh, Stark oh, was in it. That's the minority there. Ivan Stark was in it, but everybody else seemed to get out pretty cleanly from there. One of the one arrows of the are in. That's lane. Tanker. Oh, we got another incident further up the track. That's Daniel Adventure. Like. And we're going to take a look back to see what happened to Stark there. Stark is still out. Of course, he was a hero in... um. Uh, Surfer's Paradise, Surfer's Paradise here. He Jordan just went wide and took oh. it into the grass and could not keep it under oh, control in the grass. The oh, and the arrows, hit by the and arrows. the arrows hit him there. 
I'd be worried about. That's why Tanker was coming in. What happened to Daniel Adventure? Oh, he, oh they all they both just lost it there. So no my no my trip. prediction about the Toyotas, not off to a great start there. Just oh, they made a little bit of contact there. Both Toyotas did. And that was I it think, for them. I think uh, Burns up nine spots, though. Good first lap by Burns. He, uh, he definitely minded his P's and Q's. We're already on lap three. That's how quick a lap is around here. Also, great start here by DJ Curtis up to 15th already. And we are now green flag. They're already caught the oh, lap car of Tanker. Tanker. What? They're coming towards that arrow. It's pretty quickly. Blue flag's going to be out in the air for that arrows. And look at Salomeo. Look and at Salomeo is him. being massively held up there by that arrows. As here comes Red Bull going, going, Red Red Bull Bull going for here. second. Oh, oh crash! Oh. Hashimoto and Anderson off. And that's actually Nanako going off. We got two oh, more got cars down Carnage. there. That's a, a mess. We got a hot. We got a. Oh. We got a bad one. It's Blake a Lake is around. Everywhere. That's going to be prop. No, they're actually keeping going there. They only just threw a, a corner yellow for that. So they're being Everybody. really aggressive down here as Salomeo's got a big lead from that. And that's going to bump Nanako to second and Jesse Turner to third in the Odious Renault. Potential for the Renault, yeah. Again, the Renaults are very good at avoiding traffic issues there. As that's Sean Arden. It's Sean Ard. Sean Ard is actually passing a McLaren on his own merit. So down the straightaway they come. See that difference in speed here between the McLaren and the Benetton here. And, and the McLaren the is Williams way behind. pulling away there. That is Vince Freeze from 11th on the grid. Actually got by Fitzwater, so. I think Fitzwater was one of the Williams that oh. got turned. In oh, the contact, oh. and that's Art in the wall. A lot of damage. That is all. Oh, we got Curtis oh. around. That's Curtis, I believe, be around. That hairpin is a... Very scary corner, apparently. And That's now we got Ozkin going yeah. by Turner here. Remember, Mercedes did not score a point in Surfer's Paradise, and they've got a car in the lead. Where's Hashimoto running right now? Wow, must be way down the order for Kitsune Hashimoto. Is Hashimoto even out? Actually. Yeah, Hashimoto's done. So, damage, the two cars damage. that are out of the race right now, there is another one out. That's Alex Tanker as well out of the race. And Tolfe is in really as, again as well. So, now Luca Salomeo and Casey Nanico are in very solid one and two. There's Alpha Turner. Third still on. And look That's at Ace Vito with a fifth already. So, the speed of the Ferrari is really playing out well for him here. The Red Bull Honda takes over third position here, but I think Ace Vito is going to be a car to watch as this race keeps going. Surprising. Oh, we got another oh, no, incident big, and this one. One. one of the Jordans looks like up in that spot too. burn right there. And oh, we oh, got a oh. Anderson as well. Anderson. We're going to take a look here. I'm guessing this was another hairpin drama. Oh, definitely a hairpin drama. He got a hit. Sauber lost it, looks like. Lost some uh, rear grip. Hit the grass yeah. too. This is going to be yellow sector three. They might as well just put out Whoa. a permanent yellow for sector three. What happened with Byrne further up the track here? Oh, Byrne was trying to trying come to in. Come pit lane. And just runs oh, into the yeah. pit wall. Gonna do it. That's some power steering in that car. Well, Curtis went down pit lane. He had damage from earlier. That's why he's down pit lane. Yeah, so we've already had a wild start to this race. That hairpin, like I said, is not the easiest corner to get through. And until the field starts spreading out, they're going to have incidents down there. With the breaking down into uh, that hairpin there. As there's Rosselli in um, ninth position, holding off Zachary Fitzwater in 10th, Ormond in 11th, Maya up to 12th. DJ Curtis is one lap down now. I don't think he's going to be winning two races in a row. So, DJ, congrats oh, on your... Carter. Um, prediction about him struggling in this race. Ooh, there's a. Oh. There's gonna be cars going wide there, I think, today, as Ace Vito Ace now. Vito Ooh. Turner, Ooh. Turner is holding up there. a very good uh, defense there, uh, taking away the line there. Though. Yeah, here comes Grayson Ace Vito now, looking to try and pass Jesse Turner here. Ferrari looks so much quicker on the straights, but let's see the brakes on the brakes. Turner's holding his own on the brakes. And Turner got a better run out of that corner there. There's the giraffe. Let's see what we got on we'll the We'll see what here. the slipstream does. 
Here also, the difference in straightaway speed between Friar engine versus Renault engine, too. Here they go. Oh, get on the brakes. Is he going to brake check him? A little bit. A little Nearly bump. contact there. There oh. was contact there, but they were very close there to having uh, an incident there as they go on to the front stretch again here. This is some very close racing here at Puka Koe. That's allowing the McLaren to catch up, too, in that battle. Could be a three-way fight going forward. Um, get back to Case and Anico here. Oh, wait. They're going for it now. Uh, there's Ace Vito now going to the inside through yeah. turn one and two here. Mm -hmm. Are going to be on the inside for one, outside for two, and can't make the move Couldn't work there. there. As now Nanico, yeah, or Marriott, I'm yeah. sorry, that's Marriott back there, um, has now closed in as well. Jesse Turner punching well above his weight in the Renault. The Renault team is a really plucky team there, as here comes Nanico trying to close in on race leader Lucas Salameo. As now we've got the two minorities right now racing each other. Just so much, just... Let's give Ivan Stark a little bit of credit here. Stark has wrecked, I think, three times in this race, and he's already passing cars again. That's how fast Ivan Stark is. Stark should be probably in a better ride than he's in, if you ask me. Yeah, Ivan Stark is definitely, uh, he's definitely, maybe you never know. Could be, we could see a mid-season change. He's definitely setting himself up for one. Here comes some more drama here in Clamp. I think it's a little early for mid for a driver change, although we saw Ebner Ooh, get hell. cut out of a ride there. As now you got the two Saubers trying to claw their way up the field. Oh, we had another oh, car in the pits, I think, wreck there. Oh, we got, oh, oh there's the Roush thing, going around. Roush. Oh, that's Kenny Mai and the Jordan. other Jordan. Let's so both Kenny. Jordans out of the race. Double disaster for both of them. Oh, he just wrecked it on pit road here. Just lost it. He blew, he up. blew up. Yeah, I think he blew up. Yeah, he Man, what's with the on. Jordan and their crummy reliability? They blew up and uh, both Jordans once again fall out of the race with bad uh, luck reliability there. So both Jordans out of the race. And we already have a number of cars out here. Uh, Maya had a piston issue, uh, so he is going to finish 26th here. And again, this looks like it's going to be a race of survival here going forward. Ace Vito got around Turner. Ace Vito got around Turner. Oh, Ace Vito did yep, get yep. by Turner? Yes, he did, as Turner now is holding up Jack Marriott here. And I think this is where Marriott should pull out and make a move down the straightaway here. There We're we going to have to go to commercial here in a little bit here, but hopefully we can see this pass get made beforehand as the power of that Mercedes engine in the McLaren is going to, I think, help him his cause here. Oh, maybe not. Turner better on the, the brakes. Later. And uh, we're, no, Turner, Turner's going to hold the spot. Great so speed. great exit there for him as Fitzwater is trying to make a move on Servino Rosselli. We're going to have to go to commercial break here. We'll see you in a couple laps. Welcome back, and we've got some beating and banging here for the lead of the race. That's Salomeo, Nanako, and Ozkin all fighting each other here on lap 13. And around they go, this very small racetrack here. They're actually starting to catch the minorities, who, uh, the minority of Scott Roush, uh, Modest Berenger, uh, Archie Willington, and Ivan Stark here, and... Uh, we knew lap traffic was going to be a big problem in this race, but uh, with how small the track is, but we didn't expect it to be this quick. There is, oh no, no, Oskin! And then he's pulling off. Podium right now. He's pulling I'm off. The podium. And that's, a VSC. that's uh, I is that going to be a VSC? Looks like. He does get it off the track, and it's out of the racing line. There's going to be no VSC for that, so. Now it's only a two-car battle now with lapped cars coming into effect here. That's of Scott Roush and Behringer. Of course, Behringer's a lap behind Roush, so Behringer should already be getting the blue flags for Roush to go by. And now Salomeo and Nanico. Uh, here comes Ace Vito as well in third. Uh, with Marriott up to fourth, he has gotten by uh, J Jesse Turner Art is running 6th, 7th is Rosselli, 8th is Fitzwater, 9th is going to be Nathan Ormond, and Curtis is a lap down. 10th right now is going to be Vince Freeze, who did, in the commercial break, go off the track, um, overcooked it in turn 2, and so now... Hey, we got bad time both in the pool. We got a battle for the Wii, I take that bad Oh, oh Salomeo goes off the road! Oh, and Salomeo's oh, out! Down. He's out. That is going to be a VSC, though. Because that oh, car is... Oh, that's a horrible is... way. He got sandwiched by the lap cars there. You see that? The four oh, Cindy yeah. and the Minardi sandwiched him. Yeah, and that's yeah. going to be a VSC there while they're going to... No, it's not a VSC. I apologize. That's just going to be a sector yellow. 
So they're going to keep... Oh, no, it is a VSC. I apologize. That is a VSC. So now we got a new leader being... Uh, it is now a Nanako. McLaren 1-2 of Nanako and Marriott now leading this race. So, again... Or in traffic again. It's, Can you get by? Here's, again, another thing. It's another race. Another Mercedes no-point race. Mercedes, two races in, will not score any points. Oh, no, he's going to get by that it. way. Just Whoa. nosing his way there and forcing Behringer nearly off the road there as Jack Marriott got, is going Turner to be closing Benson in. Right now, battling for third and fourth, I believe. Yeah, and then there's Grace and Ace Vito as well. Uh, messed up a corner. That's why he's all the way down in fifth. We're going to actually skip ahead. Oh, contact there between the Benetton and Jesse Turner there. Or, yes, the Benetton and Turner. Yeah, Arden Turner. Uh, we're going to actually skip ahead just a bit here. That's Servino Rosselli. Oh, here's Ace Ooh. Vito now trying to look underneath Ard. Oh, man. Just a, traffic coming. just a interesting battle there. Also, Ormond now is solidly there, and that actually puts Bouchard to 10th with a Toyota, as I predicted, in near points position. Also, Kasperson is in the pits with a problem. We're going to go back and see what happened to him. Could be a calamity corner again or mechanic. We'll find out. I think it's just issues with the floor, maybe, or something with the car. Scott Roush is in with uh, damage as well. I think it was just maybe a problem with the Sauber there. Of course, this is a track with a double wide pit lane there. Got to be careful about that. Ivan Stark up to 18th by lap 14, by lap 15. So here we go once again with Ivan Stark heroics as we skip ahead up to 15th now. So Ivan Stark is being a hero again in the minority. So here we go down the straightaway here. Jesse Turner in third. Uh, that is, of course, Casperson in fourth. Ace Vito now is... That's an aggressive... He's looking underneath. Has to get around the lap. Oh, Tolfe, oh. Rex. Tolfe's around. But luckily, everybody stays in. Ozkin is back in the race, by the way. Ozkin is uh, 24th, a number of laps down, four laps down as... Jack Marriott is trying to close in on his teammate in the lead. Casey Nanako from Japan leads this race. As third place is really heating up as Grayson Ace Vito now dives underneath the lap car of Kasperson and is now trying to chase on, take on Jesse Turner in the lead of, or in, uh, in front of him in third. Sean are falling behind. I don't think I see him in the picture. He might have had an off. No, right there oh. in fifth. With Rosselli 6th and Fitzwater 7th, Ormond 8th. Both Benetton's eighth. in the points, actually. Both Ren Renos too. Both yep. McLarens, both Renos, and, and both Williams. Benetton's are in the points. Williams. And Williams. Oh, is Good day for Fitzwater? Those. Yeah, Fitzwater's in the points as well, so both Williams are in the points as well. And, of course, Daniel Boucher. Where's his teammate Jack Halleck? Halleck's down in 13th, battling Not with Darren Blake. Off. Kyle can make a run. We got strategy still to go in this race. Ooh, oh. Ormond and Ooh. the lap car of Curtis. This is an interesting situation. Curtis is faster than Ormond, but he's a lap down. So if he passes here, he's going to get a blue flag. So what do you do if you're DJ Curtis in this situation? You're a lap down and you're faster okay. than everybody else. It's just he's got to, again, just really take it easy, but I don't By think he's really listening time. to that yeah. at the moment. Desperation, really, for the Ferrari oh, right now. Curtis going underneath. He might get the draft. Further up the track now, we've got the drivers trying to get by some of these lap cars here. There's Tolfe back there. You've also got Archie Willington there. And, ooh, Arch Roselli oh, on the back bumper here. But or on the wing, or rather, on the gearbox of the car in front there. And, oh, Roselli's oh. being held up. Kind of. Oh, we got cars pitting now, apparently. That's Casperson in. And now you got Ard in as well, so is this a scheduled stop, you think? I think it could be, actually. They might try and go could an be. undercut for the Benetton team. We could be doing two stops here this race, looks like, yeah. And now Jack Marriott has closed in massively here on Casey Nanico. I don't know what that Red Bull might do, too. That Red Bull, again, is another car that's fast. Uh, did the 12 fall out of the race of Anderson? Yes, he did. So Oskin yeah, underneath, here we go. But you keep in mind, oh, Oskin's a lap down, keep in mind, remember. I'm so sorry, Oskin is four laps down, my bad. 
So it's still McLaren 1 2. Very Oh, oh we yeah. got Ace Vito and Turner once again going at it. Again. Turner's doing a great job defending in that Renault there. Really outperforming oh. for that team. Ace Vito got, Turner went wide. Ace Vito yeah, wide. this is going to oh, be yeah. Ace Vito's, I think. Although, nope. Turner goes Turner a little deeper that in advantage. there. That line looks way outside. better. The sweeping looks good. See if Maybe we're state. underestimating what those Renaults can do because this is the second time, the second race in a row where we've seen Renaults do very, very well in these races. Gotta, gotta give props to the owner, Tony Lamas. He's definitely got those drivers hyped up. Here comes. And look at the way that he blocked down the straightaway there. I think Ace Vito's going to get him this time down into the hairpin, but. Late on the brakes goes the Ferrari. Turner's and Turner, and a, nope. oh, maybe not. I oh, thought yeah, Ace Vito was going to get it. There, I thought Ace Vito was going to get it. Oh, a little oh. bit of near contact there. I pinched him a little bit. Very oh, de good you know, defensive driving there by Turner, but now you're just going to see the power of the Ferrari kick in here. And valiant, valiant Clear. battle there by Ace Vito. There is uh, one of the Force Indias is coming out of the pits there. Ooh, right in front of. And now. It's still Nanako and Casp or and Marriott there. Casperson's trying to. Uh, hey, you gotta watch that Red Bull. That Red Bull's not messing around up front. He's trying to get around. Trying to get one of his laps back. One of his four back. He's this expecting. This is gonna help Marriott. This is gonna help Marriott. Oh, here we go. Yeah. It's gonna hurt him. It's gonna That's hurt gonna Nanako. Hurt Nanako. Oh, Marriott, Marriott slid. Matter of fact, this is still all. Again, more pinching there. They're coming up to laps. Ivan Stark here in 13th. Once again, Ivan. I, I, man, for a rookie, this Ivan Stark kid is really good. <laughs> in a minority. Keyword is perseverance for the youngster here, and he's really done a great job, as you mentioned. We've always talked about Stark here. Even in round one, he was great, and is doing a great job despite not having points at the moment. Keeping the P's and Q's clean, especially after that lap one incident. Here, here we go. It's going to be two. Well, Stars what's Stark going to do Seven here? Back. Down the straightaway here. There's a, oh, a big box it. situation. Marriott's going for the lead now. Diving low underneath his teammate, I'm sure. Oh, He's contact! Sauber. The oh. Sauber gets into Nanako there, and Marriott's going to get the spot, I believe, unless if Stark keeps holding up. Oh, maybe yeah, not. I think Nanako's coming back. Yeah, Nanako's oh. still got to run. Big, great battle for the lead here. Stark, Marriott. And Marriott oh, is going to clear. Oh, we got a car blowing up. Cars. And that's Vince Freeze in the Williams is going to go out of the race here. And that is a lot of smoke coming out of the back of the BMW engine. We have to go to commercial break. We will see you in a couple laps. We are in replay here. There was a big, big incident here as Grayson Ace Vito lost all his braking here. This is, of course, in replay and runs into the back of Zep Blake or Ka that's Casperson there. Casperson. Yeah. And... Grace and Ace Vito is going to lose that elusive third place to Jesse Turner. Here we go again. Let's go back to live racing action here. As oh, didn't mean to go to Ivan Stark there. As Jack Marriott and Casey Nanico continue to lead this race, as there's Pat Mikola and Darren Blake in eighth position. Mikola is of course a lap down in 14th here. As uh, Julius Anderson is in fifth in a Toyota. I said the Toyotas would get points here. And once again, we're seeing a Toyota. Oh, Ormond. Ormond getting close. Ormond's really on the bumper, though. Oh, just make Who is another driver to watch in this race here? We've actually got the... We're already lapped up to eighth right? position here. As Frodomar Otz in ninth. And now we've got... um. Sean Arden tenth. If there's a safety car, we might be going close to who would get who is the first car two laps down, I wonder. We'd be actually lapped up to fourteenth. Ace Vito's retired. Ace Vito's done. So that means Fitzwater's out too. Both Williams are out. Fitzwater, oh no. Oh, what happened with Zachary Fitzwater here? Might have cooked it in the hairpin. We talked about that calamity. That hairpin all day. has been a calamity nightmare on this track. Let's get back to live and replay with Fitzwater. Did he have a mechanical or, blew, or did he blow the engine? I don't know. It looks like he just blew. I think he might have cooked, overcooked it. Yeah, I don't know. He just fell out. I think, I think he had like something with a gearbox or something. 
It was like Jesse Turner is in. And Ooh. that's DJ Curtis coming in with Willington. So Turner is in. That's bumping Rosselli to third. So it is now. It The running order before Turner Pitt was both the McLarens followed by both the Renaults. Oh, Toyota. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ott, Ott. did not Ott use brakes there. there. Trying to make a move on Anderson there. Anderson's coming into the pits anyway. But he got spooked, actually, by... Ott's just blasted so by trying to get the move there. And surprise, it almost worked. Now, Kenny, what do you think about that Sean R. Undercut? Is he looking for a three-stop race to try to steal some points? I don't know, honestly, what's going on here. Is Still, we've got... Nathan Orman just passed Nanako on track, so Nanako's tires must be shot right is that now. Orman in second? No, Orman is a lap down in fifth. Wow, we're up to fourth on the lap car. That's crazy. But keep in mind, a lot of these drivers have pitted already, and um, Marriott and Nanako have not, so. And that explains it. Then the youth in those tires compared to those really. And now really Nanako coming is coming in, in but the fifth place car is as well, so Orman might have not pitted already. Um, crazy race going on. Remember, um, this pit road has one of the slowest pit road speed Ooh. limits in the entire series at 20. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Orman had a stop go penalty. Or something so it's like we didn't not get quite the call sure in time yeah he was battling with fitzwater earlier it could be something of that nature and now norman's gonna lose a lot of positions on track here where is race leader jack marriott here the british driver now is going around the corner here around the holden hairpin there was he going to bring it down pit road this time negative on that so marriott has a big lead over um Rosselli. Now, is Marriott going for oh, a Oh, I'm sorry, Nanako. Oh, no, Rosselli came in with Nanako. Nanako's going for a two-stopper. And That's what actually, it looks like. now, Marriott's lapped the field. If I'm Marriott here, you, you, you got a shot to... Oh, here comes Nanako. He's going to overtake him with the fresh tires. He's got the field lap. Yeah, Na but Nanako has fresh tires here. The teammates now, and if I'm McLaren, am I getting on the horn and telling Marriott to let Nanako by, or is, Ma is, Nana or is Marriott just going to try and hold up his teammate as much as possible here? I give him the chrome bumper, though. Ooh. Didn't decide to, actually. And Marriott continues to lead He's this staying race, out staying too. out. Also, keep in mind, Jesse Turner has leapfrogged over Rosselli in fourth. So it is still the McLarens followed by the Renaults in the um, top four right there. Oh, somebody's looks steady. like somebody's – that's uh, Anderson coming – oh, man, Anderson again coming in. Maybe speeding on pit road there. So a points-paying run. Now Daniel Adventure's in the top ten. So both Toyotas are flirting with, a, uh, with points, so – Adventure's been on a solid no adventure here. Just nice, no P's and Q's binds it. Uh, you really seem here. to like your Daniel Adventure um, puns there. Remember, this is not a battle for position right now because right now Marriott has lapped the field. Oh, Nanako oh. loses it! Oh, oh that's going to be crucial, percent. especially when it comes to pit stops because you lose so oh, much time in pit lane. That... And... Oh, and, and Turner goes around! Oh, oh, oh. The Jack nearly like clawed for Turner. That had to be contact. No! The no, Jag went it. off at the same time, and Turner just... Oh, somebody else is off. The, the Jag, Jag of Mikola. Mikolas. Ooh. And Turner got that makes Rosselli go up to third. I think Rosselli actually might get the points lead after this one, actually, with Curtis struggling. Yeah! Servito Rosselli, if this, if this keeps the way it is, Servito Rosselli is going to be the point leader. As long as, he keeps on the road. Yeah, as long as he keeps on the road. Cody Lamas must be crazy in the, the stream hall Renault, right now. Renault overall might have a very good field day with this one. Nanako trying Nanico. to get back underneath. Trying everything possible there. It's Ivan Stark is in 10th, everybody! <laughs> Ivan Stark, Stark in the, the miracle-powered minority is in 10th. Oh, boy. The Miracle Powered Minority, 10th position. Rosselli, third. And, oh, where's Turner? 
Oh, we oh, got somebody's... a problem with some. Oh, I thought I saw somebody slow on track. I thought no, it was. I it was Ott, I yeah. think, in the Total Jaguar. Coming in now. Again, this race is kind of a bit out there now because we don't know Orman who's running again. where. Orman coming in now as well. Jack Marriott, though. Although, look how much quicker. Nanako is two seconds quicker than Marriott. Marriott's tires are shot. I, I think he's going for a one-stop strategy to win this race. It's a very gutsy call, too, because if they can extend it that long, they can definitely extend it to the end. Yeah. Now, here, now here's the thing. Right now, they'd make it to... If they go to lap 40, he'd make it to theoretically lap 80, and it's only a 79-lap race. So, Marriott's going... For, oh, he's on 41 right now, so he... He's definitely good. Is good now, to go till the end of the race. The oh boy, that was a little. Oh, I don't really think Orman expected Orman. Nanako to be there, but now Kenny, this is the thing with Nanako. He pitted the lap around thirty-four. He comes in at sixty-eight. He's gonna have eleven. Almost laps three fire. seconds faster, Nanako is. And if Nanako wouldn't have spun out, I honestly think Nanako would have gotten the provisional. Look how much further oh, yeah. on the brakes Nanako can get. Look at no, how much further. Oh. What a dive. That was a heck of a dive there. And, but what that also does is it prevents Marriott from pitting. That's really going to hurt some time on Marriott, too, because Nanako just got around her teammate. And Nanako now is trying to set blisteringly fast lap times here. Uh, DJ Curtis and Ivan Stark are doing battle now for the last points paying spot. Um, I wonder who's going to win this point. Who's going to win this battle? Yeah, Curtis the doesn't take himself out. Looks like if he can get around Stark quite easily, and looks like he might be able to. That's Curtis probably going to be up to be Yeah, yeah that Curtis one's good. definitely on Curtis there, because that Minardi has no power down the straightaway. Uh, Curtis on the brakes here. Let's Stark, you never know. Stark could fight back. If Stark fights, oh my Bumper. gosh, Stark is. I was just going to say if Stark fights back i would be shocked but stark tried stark tried marriott's in marriott, marriott is it. finally bringing it down pit road i think three seconds was difference in speed was definitely enough there now the question is Where's where nanico? is nanico it's coming down the front front straight here into the first this quarter. is gonna be this like is gonna I be the for the win remember what i said well i don't know i think nanico's gonna have to pit again here marriott is going to have this is the slowest pit stop in the entire series, so... Well, okay, looks like we're going to get the classic. Nanako's going to come in around lap 68 and have 12 lap fresher tires. If the second's three-second difference compared to old tires versus new tires, it's going to be close regardless. We'll see. Here comes Marriott out of the pits. Nanako's, Nanako's coming out of the hair. Nanako's going to have warmer tires. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. Clip died. And it's going to be Marriott by about five seconds there. Naria will have a little bit, you know, a little bit to get up to speed, but I think Nanako can still close the gap. I to think win. it's spun. about five seconds there. Or, it's a little, a little more left. than that. Um, also, big shout out to the Haas team, fifth or sixth and seventh there for the Haases. Great to see them out there. Darren Blake, Ivan Stark in ninth. DJ Curtis. Alex in there. Alex. Down to eleventh, I believe Curtis just brought it down pit road. And Stark now is in ninth, so a couple more cars have pitted. And now DJ Curtis is um, right now holding battle in 11th here, but oh, both them uh, Jags are in. Oh, Mikola's oh. out of the race. What happened with Pat Mikola? Oh, no, oh, that was wow. not mechanical, mechanical there. He lost to control of the car on. Oh. Hit I think the, the wall just kind of gave way. <laughs> Hit Mikola. the wall there, Mikola. That's going to be a virtual safety car. I believe that's the second one of the day. There, but luckily they were able to get that car out of the adventure way there. Really hit the adventure. And here we go now. It is definitely Marriott doing 52 second laps, and Nanako just set the fastest lap of the race. So tire heat is a big factor on this track. That gap's got to be down to like four or three seconds now. Nanico and also keep here. in mind, Definitely. Marriott is dealing with lapped traffic as well. Uh, Marriott didn't oh, pick Nanico up the speed, too. though. Nanako 
does a 50.1 compared to a 50.5 by Marriott. So Nanako is closing in here on Marriott there. Third position is now Servino Rosselli. And Jesse Turner is in again. I'm wondering if there might be an issue with that car. Uh, that's actually going to bump Ard to fourth. And Can the Benetton get a podium? I don't know, because I don't think Rosselli's going to let him buy that easy there. And do we have Ace Vito fall out? Of yes, Ace Vito did fall yeah, out. Ace Vito fell there. out after the incident with the Sauber. Casperson. Ormond is in. Turner is down to 7th position, so that's um, Halleck goes by and Bouchard go by. Great day for Haas. Not, not, not bad at all. They're going to definitely get some good points. I got to keep throwing props to Servino Rosselli. I think Rosselli is going to end up with the points lead coming out of this race at this rate as he gets by Nathan Ormond there. I mean, after race two, would you have ever thought that a Renault driver would be leading the points possibly? Got to give credit. I mean, they minded their P's and Q's, and DJ said patience was the word of the day, and it's definitely paying off. Marriott continues to lead this race with a 50.4, and actually Nanako is slowing down a bit, so Marriott's pit tires. strategy is playing off here. Doing well. So, and definitely Marriott's picking up the pace now. So, up. Oh. Now it's oh, Ormond's coming back down pit road, so there are some major issues with Ormond's car. He's been on pit road the last couple of laps here. Is there anybody that... Oh, there's Oskin still out there in 13th. Um, he's not, of course, the furthest one car, car one lap down. Him. There is... Um, Julius Anderson is six laps down. He was running fifth a while ago. Anderson has had some major problems recently. Otz is five laps down. Ormond is four laps down. And He's Oskin right is only of... two. So Oskin now is doing battle with um, the lap car of Otz. And he is actually racing. No, he is not racing with Ormond. He is a lap in front of Ormond. So uh, Daniel Adventure now, because of his teammate going six laps down, now is promoted up into the points in his other in the other Toyota. So here's the Red Bull under Ormond. The Red Bull of Ormond. Oh, oh. that would be Otz on the inside Ooh, there. Of... Wheel spin there from the Jaguar. Jaguars have been a menacing force all day on those brakes. They... Oh, oh Ormond there's something big I think wrong, there's with something wrong with that car. That car is just well, continuously coming down pit road, I think just trying to maybe hope that there's more calamity on track. The Orbit's coming in every lap, so I think he's got some suspension or terminal damage. Terminal damage, but they don't want to uh, end that car. car. Here comes Nanako now. Marriott's and gone. Marriott is definitely pulling here on Nanako. Uh, I think this is going to, at this rate, it looks like Jack Turner. Marriott is going to win this race if this race keeps going the way it is. As long as he gets by the lap traffic. God. Again, fuel could be a problem, too, for him, but, I mean, he made it 44 laps, was it? Yeah, 44. Yeah, pretty far. Definitely That's... past the uh, limit. I mean, we that would get him to be. theoretical 88, and we're only doing 79 today, so he's actually coming up to lap Jesse Turner, who was running for a podium position a little bit ago, but he's coming up to a very uh, chaotic Turn battle forward. here with... Um, who, uh, he's coming up to a very chaotic battle with uh, Daniel Adventure in front of our odds. Um, underneath Turner, ooh, I think. Ott's yeah. way wide there. Way wide there. Yeah, underneath Turner. There's Turner and ooh, Marriott. Turner right the ooh. What would happen if Marriott wrecks the car? Because... He's clear. He's clear. Yeah, he is clear there. Down the straightaway they go. There's the two Haas, Haas is doing is battle. For fifth. Yep, and it looks like Halleck is going to get Bouchard there. Oh, Halleck Bouchard, the terrible side. corner there. You're and now in on Ard, too. Ard is in what trouble. What a rub by Halleck. This car's not as strong as the Haas is there. You look at look at the difference in speed. The, the Haas have powered. engine. Oh, go ahead there, Vince. Yeah, the oh! oh! What a save. 
What a save there by or, by Ard there. Great action out of Pia Cohen today, not gonna lie. We've had some oh here comes Halg again. Halg nearly in the grass trying to He's make the hungry. move work. But this is like Halg's second home race, New Zealand Australia really close, so he's definitely putting on a Ard three. very late on the brakes there. Halg not gonna get the run. Ard gonna take that. No run for Ard. And now Bouchard is closing in again, but Bouchard is doing 53 second laps, so I think Bouchard's definitely got a problem, or definitely he's got older tires there. I think he pitted early, if I'm not mistaken. How trying to get into the brakes? Nope. Watch oh, this look at that ah, move! That, that could be look at move that move by Jack oh. Halleck there! Utter Blasting brilliant. onto the straightaway there. That was a beautiful move there for fourth. And if there's calamity with any of the top three, that's a podium for him there. Oh, did I see Nothing something wrong with, wrong with Marotz? The, the Jaguar of Frodo Marotz has a problem. Got to get out the line. Got to get away. And DJ Curtis has to swing wide to avoid Frodo Mar there, the German driver. Frodemar and is in the grass, oh, just trying to get out of the way. There's Ormond, who's been in and out of the pits eight times in this race we are going to commercial break here and we will see you hopefully for the conclusion of the race and disaster for casey nanico as we come back for lap 54 here nanico has grenaded the motor and has fallen out of the race so a one two that was lined up for mclaren easily is now done with nanico blowing up that leaves a battle for the podium, though, between, I think, the Benetton and the Haas, so... Is that Halleck and Ard? Yep, that's Halleck and Ard. <laughs> that means Rosselli is again in second position! <laughs> Rosselli keeps on the track, Kenny. That's your point, sweet, right there. He's got to hope for the other McLaren to and blow Jack up. Jack Halleck in a Haas in third! I mean... <laughs> what a day. Jack Marriott has a big, big lead here. The only thing Marriott has to worry about is those engine noises. Other than that, he's got this. In the Wouldn't it be funny if he blew up too? Certainly would not be, be a bright bad... need no more for the for the. It'd be uh, a Renault. bad day for McLaren, but when you have Nanico blowing up there, and oh man, Nanico did everything she could. To become the first Formula Omega female Formula Omega winner, but not gonna get it today here in Pukakoe or Pukakoe. Down the straightaway here, um, Servino Rosselli in second, who is actually on pit strategy in a better position, or no, not not than Marriott was in a better position than Rosselli, but not than Marriott. Coming up here on 21 laps to go. And you know how quick that is around here. That's only about 20 minutes. Oh, Red Bull. Red Bull uh, V. That's actually for position between Casperson and... Oh, no. It's for position, but Casperson's a lap behind. So, uh, Sam and Oz can... Uh, just trying to hope that there's more calamity throughout the day in order so that he can get some much-needed points. He finished third at Surfer's Paradise. Here and comes Casperson on the brakes. I think he's on fresher tires too. Casperson is in that yeah, salvo. Yeah, Casperson, that could be a big thing too. As um, there he goes right by. Bad day for the Sauber team on the Casperson side, but a good day again for Darren Blake. Quiet run in sixth position here for Darren Blake, going through the order here. It's been another chaotic second race here. As uh oh, Marriott's in traffic. It's Bouchard and Art. Bouchard actually passed Art. Bouchard actually passed Ard there. And what is Marriott going to do? Marriott's got to be careful here. Marriott did get into, the, get into the Haas there. And, oh, oh, the Haas oh, didn't like that. that. And well, here they go on the outside here. Marriott sliding around the there. Nearly the comes McLaren. across the front wing oh, of the Haas. But like you said, the power of the McLaren gets him in a position where he can massively pull away there. Only three cars on the lead lap right now. And hey, Halleck... Is, is that, what? If we get... If we something happens for Rosselli, we might have a double Haas podium. That would be something. 
Yeah, if something happened to Roselli or for um, Marriott for that matter. As Roselli is solidly in second position. Um, oh, so uh, oh, Orman's coming in again. What a shock. Um, oh. Ivan Stark, eighth position. Once the again, right points Hulk's again for Minardi. Minardi, I, I I can't believe that the Minardi team can keep getting points despite having the second slowest car on the grid, behind the only in front of the arrows here. Ivan, St can somebody? Uh, okay, here's the thing: when they get to Europe, d do you think another team's going to jump up and try and hire Stark for a driver who maybe not be performing, or is it too early to be making those moves? I think by race, the 600 kilometers of car, y'all, if he can do something there, I think that's where they're going to put the eyes. That's the biggest race this season. Got to look out for that one. I would Jet. definitely wait for the season to really progress in order to make a full-on decision by team principals here, but Stark really just giving his worth, being at the right place at the right time, getting those points. Yeah, Ivan Stark doing great there, but Jack Marriott still is... Um, a On driver a to watch. Mario has been consistent all day. His long run pace has been consistent. His 15, 20 lap runs have been consistent. He's definitely a guy he's earned it as long as he doesn't have any engine grab one. And as we go a little further back, Bouchard. Ormond, Ormond again. again. Both the Saubers doing battle here. Uh, Casperson setting some really quick lap times here. Uh, he has pitted. Those fresh tires. Fresh tires are helping. Yep, as we keep going forward here. Uh, just overall, it's calmed down quite a lot this race with only a little bit to go. Um, we're going to actually cut out for a commercial break a little bit earlier here so that we can bring you the end of the race uh, without uh, substantial commercial interference. So we will see you then. This pass easy. With ten and a half laps to go, welcome back here as Jack Marriott's going to lap Jack Halleck. Um, making it only two cars on the lead lap with Rosselli and Halleck, that would be. But Halleck is doing a good job holding them off here. Even though there is kind of a blue flag thing there. There's Ormond coming into the pits again. Uh, Ormond is, I think, a massive 18 laps down? Yeah, 18? That sounds about right. So, just overall, who do you think the driver of the day so far has been today that has kind of surprised you today? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Sean Ard. I mean, the man, he blew up last week. He was having a great run surfers. I mean, again, top five run. And it gets the Haas team. Shout out to those guys. It could be a podium contention. I think it's going to be Jack Halleck. That is, for me, my driver of the day here. Jack Halleck doing a great job. Made a beautiful pass at one point. He's done a great job. Kept the car clean overall. We'll also give a shout out to Ivan Stark, too. He also is back. Oh, yeah. Bernard, definitely. Ivan Stark has quickly become a fan favorite to, uh, so far this week, uh, from last weekend now, and up to 8th again. Oh, man, points two races in a row for Minardi. I would have never expected that from that team. And yeah, It's up to the dry, It's up to the team owners if they're going to make a decision on one of their drivers, but if you're a team, if you're, let's say, Mercedes even, if you think about it, you haven't scored a point yet this year. Should you be looking at your drivers, possibly? I still think it's a little early. Uh, oh, somebody's trying to come in there. But I still think it's early because... Oh, is there a oh, problem no. with Stark? No, I think it's just the tires and Casperson again just kicking in. Unless Stark well, Stark's starts, doing 54. Power, but... Stark's doing 54 second laps, so he is way old on tires. tires. That's a good point, Kenny. What's those Marriott lap times looking like? Jack Marriott lap times are 51 eighths. So falling off a little bit, but not too much. But he's still the quickest car on track. Oh, yeah. Far. Um. 51 5 for Marriott that time. Oh. Ooh, I think one of the Sowers oh. bumped one of the Hasses or Hosses there. Yeah, that might have been. Moment, it looked like. Um, the fastest car on track is actually Joachim Kasperson. Yep, fresher tires. Uh, not now, though. Uh, he was, I think, a couple hundredths off. Oh, here we go. I saw... That's... Uh, oh, gosh, look how quick. 55 for Oskin there. He's been on those tires forever. And Marriott just blows by him like he's standing still. 
I think we're only going to get one anthem today, as it's going to be the British anthem for both team and constructor at this rate. There's Servino Rosselli, the Italian driving for a French team. In second, the only car that I don't think will get lapped in this race. Barring a spin, I think he will get lapped. Yep. Yeah, very chaotic start to the race and a very calm end of the race right now. But look how much quicker Rosselli is compared to some cars here. This is against Nathan Ormond here. He's got to watch Ormond. Ormond's going to cut back in the pit lane. Oh, yeah. That might be the very... Unless the that's, that's actually that might be on, Ard. So. No, that's Ard. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> that's why that car wasn't pitting. It's not Ormond. But, yes. A bit there. Rosselli now has lapped Ard. The guard's tires were shot again. He's just bringing it home, whipping it home. So with that being said, what teams still haven't scored points? So we know the Jordan team hasn't. We know the Mercedes team hasn't. Uh, Jaguar, Jaguar. Jaguar. Jaguar has Otz and Mikola both out of the race. Arrows. The Arrows the hasn't team. scored one. DJ Curtis also up to 10th, so Curtis will score points in this race. Um... Force Indy hasn't scored points yet. Yep. They had a reliability upgrade, I believe, this this round. It didn't really seem to be the case for them today. Yeah, Behringer and Willington fell out of the race there. Um, if this race keeps going this way, uh, we might be missing a team here or there. But um, Mercedes has definitely not had a good start to the year so far. No points in either race here at Surfers Paradise or Pukekohe. Yeah, you gotta get think... done and walk cleaner. That's the oh, yeah. I don't think the Mercedes drivers are really underperforming necessarily. Um, I think it's just they've just been very unlucky with these events so far because Salomeo had really good speed, got taken out early on, and then Hashimoto got taken out as well. There's Mariano and Curtis coming up here. Let's see what Curtis does. He's probably pull over with the blue flags. Pulling with the blue flags, DJ Curtis is trying to at least be. Gracious. Mm. Yep. Cooperative gracious. to say the least. Yep. Gives him plenty of space. Great move there. Coming up here to four to go. Yeah, just overall. It's very spread out. I think when most of the field got taken out pretty much early on, it's oh they're using Come the salvage going at it now. Casperson again on those Casperson. Like, Casperson is aggressive, I will say. If Casperson had and he's actually catching, he's actually catching Sam at Oskin. That could be a battle here because Casperson's three seconds a lap quicker than Oskin. Best battle on track as of now is that oh, we got uh, Oskin on Ord, I think. Uh, that's yeah, actually the that's slow Ormond. 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 <laughs> Oskin will get, get around. Yeah, and keep in mind, Oskin is five laps off the pace. And still, Orman is still trying to pass Orman. So that just shows how bad Orman's car is right now. There are only 14 car. cars running right now. Here comes Orman on the brakes. No. And Casperson and them, uh, we're looking to see where 10th is. DJ Curtis is in 10th, and Casperson is still two seconds faster than even DJ Curtis. So... I don't think we'll have enough time for Curtis, but I think we'll get Oskin. Yeah. Here comes. Is that Marriott, Marriott going to put Ard two laps down, I believe? That's Ard, and then that's Turner again. Going for two laps down now. Yeah, so... Overall, Jack Marriott has put on a clinic today. And well-deserved, right? He had the long-run pace. He had the short-run car. His pitch strategy was on point. Ooh, look at the braking there. Uh, yeah. There you go. Just gotta bring it home if you're Jack Marriott. Your teammate has already fallen out of the race with engine rely with. Oh, Halleck oh, loses third. Up. I now think. Who's going to promote? It's Bouchard? not going to promote anybody because Bouchard so is on the other end of the board. track. Halleck, get back going. And if Casperson can get by Oz, can easily here. Can he make a run at Curtis? I don't think. Ah. Uh, Casperson is four seconds a lap faster than Curtis. It's going to be the last lap. Could be the last hairpin last turn. Could be it. With only three to go, though, I don't think that's going to happen. 
and look how much of a lead just Casperson pulled on Oskin there. If Casperson can catch DJ Curtis, that is an impressive showdown there. And look how slow Curtis is through that hairpin. Curtis is just bringing it home. Two Never laps to go for. Two laps to go yeah. for Jack Marriott here. He gets by turn here, two to go. Down the front straight. And turn not really going to be too much of a hassle for the McLaren. And actually, now Rosselli is under threat a little. No, Rosselli just got by Dan, uh, Daniel Bouchard He's there. Up ahead, so. And look how much Casperson has just pulled away in one lap from Oskin. Austin's tired. Look at shot. that. Casperson's going crazy. But I don't think he's going to catch Curtis at this rate. I, think I really is don't. He's a lap ahead of uh, Casperson. Oh, is he? Oh, yes, oh, he is a lap ahead of Casperson, so never mind that. I think, I think we got a bit oh, too high. Oh, there stuff. goes Turner there goes off Turner. the road. And is that going to help Ard? Ard? Turner's really crawling that car now. Look, Ard's look in the pit the wall. He's going to get. Ard versus Turner here. And Art is Turner still got it. Yeah, Art's got no tires left. Art has zilch for tires, was. but look, look how slow he is in that. Yeah, white flag for Jack tires Marriott now. Because Marriott Jack through the S's. Marriott the has thoroughly dominated the ending stages of this race. Um, just a just great job here. Just got to get by one more car here down the straightaway here. That's Dorn and Bouchard. Or Daniel Bouchard, go. sorry, Daniel Bouchard, and ooh, there was an accident on track somewhere. There. Could be from Halleck, but we'll see. Here he comes to the final couple of corners. Here comes Jack Marriott. Jack Marriott, fat last couple of corners for Jack Marriott, the British driver with a British team. Qualified on pole for Surfers Paradise, but didn't finish as well as he would have liked. But he's going to win the Grand Prix of New Zealand here. Clip cut out right as Jack Marriott won the race there. And oh, Halleck is coming in. That could be a shakeup. We are going to see what happened on the back stretch, though. We're going to go back here quick. Did Halleck cross the line, too? Because there was incident on track here. With Look at all the debris down there. We're going to take so we a look. We saw Halleck spin. We'll see. Ooh. That was Daniel Adventure on the Minardi. Oh, oh wow, that's a lot. And that's huge contact, too. Of Ivan Stark. I think the closing oh, speed way too quick. And sure or, that's Anderson. Old. I'm sorry, not Adventure. And does Anderson make... Do they both make the hairpin? Yes, they do. That's a shock. Yeah, they both do it. Ivan Stark would come home ninth in that race. Somebody got by him. That was actually Adventure got by him there. But today's winner, today is Jack Marriott. Oh, Anderson actually fell out of the race there at the end there. He's still going to finish in front of Ormond, though. Halleck keeps his third. Halleck does keep third despite spinning out there with Bouchard fourth and Jesse Turner fifth. But we'll get our closing thoughts here in one minute after the national anthem here. Welcome back, and this is kind of our post-race thoughts now. So, race was kind of a weird one, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, we had a tale of two races. The first half, absolute calamity. We, we, we knew it was going to be from lap one, right? DJ and all three of us agreed that Trish and Todd Kenny, you called that. And then once uh, the, the McLarens got out front until Nanako blew up, it was pretty much smooth sail for Jack Perry. It had the best car, both long run pace and short run pace. But I think today's day of the day has to go to the drivers who we don't expect to be up front. People like 
Rosselli, who could be leading the points, he's definitely a threat. And people like Sean Art, Ivan Stark, got to give credits to them, too. Oh, yeah, most definitely so. Darren Blake had a great run in 7th, Adventure in 8th. Stark, we talked about him quite a lot in that ninth position for the minority. DJ Curtis managed to actually snatch 8-point position in 10th. Great recovery for the Ferrari team. I think they expected a much worse weekend with Ansevito knocked out. Jack Halleck, we talked about him. Podium for the Haas there. Rosselli, he will be coming out of the points there, as it seems, for the Renault. Two second blazes in a row. I think they're going to be hungry for that victory. And as we go through the order as well, who are some drivers that didn't do very well? I'm looking down at, like, Salameo, Hashimoto, 29th, 24th for Salameo. He was leading the Jordan race when that well. happened. Both the Jordans. Yeah, Wo Free Williams. Williams, too. Williams as well. Yeah, Williams is a bad day. Just overall, some teams had a really, really bad day for themselves here. Uh, Red Bull, uh, no points today. Force India not looking good at all. Force India needs some massive changes, I believe, coming up here. Um, Scott Roush on debut didn't do very well. Um, my prediction about a Toyota getting a point what well, did come true as Daniel Adventure comes home eighth. Uh, so Toyota looks very strong here. And, um, yeah, overall, um, some kind of surprises down there. Like I said, Mercedes not scoring a point yet this year is a shock to me. Yeah, Mercedes and uh, Williams, though, they definitely stand out, right? You expect Mercedes, you know, with the qualifying pace they've shown the first two races, they at least have 20, 30 points by now. But it just shows you, man, it's race day. So there's always Sundays for a reason, as they like to say in the business. Got to show up when the, uh, the time comes under the lights. All right. Any last thoughts before going into La Colina? Very exciting race overall here at Pukekohe. And, well, with La Colina in fruition really coming towards us sooner or later. And also could be a fun event. We've had some great action in both these races so far. And with this one being a high attrition rate filled, this could really, La Colina could be a bit of a repeat. You never know. I expect the midfield battle heading into La Colina to be incredibly tight. I, I don't know who to even pick because that's how close it is. And let's see the bounce back, right? We got guys like AZ, we forgot about him. No points finishes so far this year. He's definitely going to be on the hunt heading into La Colina. And watch out for uh, McLaren. They could be the best team on the grid as far as override speed here. All right, let's go take a look at the points coming up here in one second. So looking at the points, Servino Rosselli is your point leader with two second place finishes right there. Rosselli could be another driver uh, fighting for one of those top tier rides there. Jack Marriott is the second place in point driver there with a second and 20, a second play or with a win and a ninth. DJ Curtis is third in points with Darren Blake in fourth in points. Dornan Bouchard is on fifth in points with Oskin sixth in points. Uh, Halleck 7th, Stark 8th, Turner 9th, Casperson 10th, Ard, Freeze, Adventure, and Anderson is the last car to have points. Everybody else, 15th on down, still hasn't scored a point in the championship so far. So are there any big surprises that are higher up in the points than you would have thought? I mean, Rosselli. obviously Rosselli, Rosselli, the point leader. <laughs> but... we got to give Halleck credit, too. I mean, he, top 10 in points for Haas, and I mean, we'll see about the next slide about what they're about to do when they're constructing. But right now, I, I gotta give props to Alec and Rosselli. God. Um, and also, his teammate, Bouchard, and as well and as Turner. the person above him, Blake yep. as well. Bouchard, I mean, Bouchard fifth in points. That's better than Preston. Halleck right now. Ken, so. you, you said that Rosselli should go to a top tier ride, but is Renault becoming a top? That's it's a good, good point. Because That's a good question. As we look onto the next slide, uh, let so me next spread slide this out that. here. Reno is the constructors' point leader with Haas in second. They rock into the way double points for the Haas team, and that is huge for them. McLaren is in third with Ferrari and Sauber fourth and fifth. Um, Red Bull only has had one car score a point this year. Um, Minardi, I mean Minardi, right there. They're so ahead of like, Williams and Mercedes yeah. and Jordan. Minardi is ahead of Williams, Mercedes, Jordan, 
and I mean, it, it's just amazing that Minardi is up there, really. It's a great start for them this season. Benetton up there as well with Williams could have had an easy double points in Surfer's Paradise. I mean, obviously that wasn't going to be the case here, but Williams uh, had a disappointing weekend here in New Zealand. Um, also disappointing for Red Bull as well uh, going forward. But I think the big question now is, can is this going to be a prolonged thing? We're going to see Renault just consistently clawing points away here, or is it just because these two races that we've had so far were so high attrition races? So that's the million dollar question, right? If if we don't get a high, we get a clean, you know, what we think is going to be La Colina, what we've seen some other races in the test. If it's clean, then yeah, I think Renault could slip down, but even with the nice point cushion, they could be heading into round three still with the constructors of Turner and, and um, Rosselli can sneak out of top ten. They could still be having that cushion padding. And Haas, give those guys credit. I, I did not have them on the radar for a second. Yeah, Haas was the big surprise there. Uh, I will also say McLaren probably should have the constructors point lead because in both races they've had one twos. Before. I think they're the yeah. best car on the grid, honestly. McLaren seems to really just have their car just nailed down compared to all the other top teams you expect, like Mercedes and Ferrari, and you know Ferrari dropping down to fifth with only Curtis scoring a point, and Acevedo, again, struggling in the race, and Mercedes just still yet to get that elusive point for either one of those drivers. Yeah, Mercedes... I mean, as we get into the European leg with uh, La Colina... Um, Italy with Lido and then Circuit Circuit Thierry Sicot and then Brands Hatch. We're going to be going into a, a group of tracks that are a bit more variable here. Um, kind of mix of slow and fast. All the next four tracks are so you had a really slow street circuit in Australia, and then you've got um, some other tracks down there, and then. Really, there's only two other street circuits left being the... Uh, there's only one other street... Or there's only a handful of street circuits to go. Uh, we know Canada, trois Rive is one. And then, other than that, you've got some just some very um, different kind of racing here coming up where it's a more balanced kind of tracks. I mean, obviously, uh, the track, the most like New Zealand's going to be uh, Hockenheim, which is quite a bit later. That's the German round, so... I mean, right now you're just, like... I, I have a feeling you're going to start seeing the McLarens, the Ferraris, the Red Bulls start climbing up through the order. I mean, Jordan not getting any points, too. I mean, you got five teams without points there, and Mercedes and Jordan, there's no reason why they should be down there, because they are faster than that. Yeah, you also have to look at this, too, in another, another point. If we do get more high-attrition races, let's say middle of the season, and Renault does stay up there, let's say top three in points, that's a win. No matter what Renault does the rest of the season, I think they can easily solidify top six in points if they keep this attrition races up. Even if they don't, got to remember, we have the upgrade season, too, right? We, Consistency. We, yeah, we don't know what the upgrades will bring because those upgrades could be worth a second or two depending on how you do with the car and the arrow and the chassis. And we'll see what happens. So, are there any other final things you want to say? No, I, it's been a good two races. Have to admit, Kenny, we've seen some high attrition. But this one definitely, I think, tops the cake. We had all the action here here at uh, Piacoe. And another thing, too, right, like you said, the McLarens, I think, as DJ mentioned, are this is this the team to beat? We never thought these guys would be a team to beat. They look like they have all the aces in the early season four. DJ, you got any last saying? The real question is when will is Renault going to be consistent enough to really even solidify the constructors championship or even the drivers championship because right now they're looking to actually be the team to beat in terms of just thinking of the big picture they may not have the best in terms of speed or maybe even corner speed but they've really put up the results from both team members to really showcase their strength here early this season with upgrades coming up like Vince pointed out it could be fun to see what these teams have in store for the upcoming rounds and I got nothing else to say other than that, but uh, we'll see you next week for the round of Spain, or for the Grand Prix of Spain, in, or the Spanish Grand Prix at La Colina. And congratulations to Jack Halleck and to Servino Rosselli for taking over the point lead. We'll see you next week.